Hi friends, let us start with this new course and today I'm going to start with lecture one on this course on introduction to aerospace engineering and in this course I'm going to cover all the things you need to know for the analysis and design of aircraft and then in the second half of the course we are going to look at some of the things you know for spacecraft and so on. And today's lecture is about flight vehicles. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So essentially the history of the modern aircraft as you see it began in 1903 when the Wright brothers did their first successful flight. Now before this flight there was a lot of research done primarily on mechanics of fluids, mechanics of solids, propulsion systems and so on and this research was done by engineers and scientists over a course of almost a hundred years. This research included theory and experiments and this essentially led to the culmination in this first successful flight. So we need to keep that in mind that a lot of work was done by the fluid mechanics people before the Wright brothers could fly their aircraft. Now one of the things which was hampering the research in the early days was that people looked at birds and they got motivation from birds and if we look at birds what happens in birds is that the lift and propulsion systems are combined and therefore it was very difficult with the available technology in those days to come up with something which was bird-like and so a lot of time and money was expended by the engineers trying to create what are known as ornithopters which mimic bird flight. Now an important break was made by George Cayley and this gentleman discovered that the lift and propulsion functions of a flight vehicle could be separated. So this is a major breakthrough and this essentially led to the current aircraft as you see it. So nowadays you see aircraft such as the Boeing 777 or the Airbus A350 which are able to fly enormous distances and essentially this is not because they emulate the flight of birds but because they separate the lift and the propulsion function. Essentially the lift function comes from the wings and the propulsion function comes from the engines here. So in some ways their design is actually far less complicated than the design of birds. Now, one of the things which Cayley also introduced was the creation of the horizontal and vertical tail for stability. And these tails, you can say some of it is mimicked from the fish type of systems, were actually very important because stability is one of the key factors in an aircraft. And without these tails being present, the aircraft is not going to be able to fly. Now one more person who was very important in the development of flight was Otto Lilianthal and this person was the one who incorporated the first glider flight in 1891 and then he performed many more glider flights after that and one of the important things is that he published a lot of the data which was generated from this flight. So again, these publications were useful in providing a database for future engineer and scientist in terms of gliding flight. Now, if you see any bird, you will see that the gliding flight is something which comes closer to what the aircraft do today. So if you see such birds such as eagle, birds with long wing spans when they soar in the air, then you will see that the gliding flight is involved and the gliding flight is something which essentially creates all the theory and background behind the modern power flight except for the engine concerned. So if you separate the engine out, the glider has all the remaining things inside it which essentially make the modern airplane. So for powered flight, we of course required some form of propulsion and initially this was very difficult because the power was being generated from the steam engines. Then this was sufficient for marine systems, for ships, 
But do remember that ships do not need to take off. They do not need to have low weight and so on. So one of the things we had to wait for was the development of better power to weight ratio engines. And this essentially came from the development of the petrol or gasoline powered IC engines. So these are the internal combustion engines and these essentially propelled the aeronautics field forward because they had better power to weight ratio. So again, this often happens in technology that until all the pieces of the puzzle fall into place, you cannot make progress. It just doesn't happen because one or two people are highly intelligent and come up with something. What needs to happen is that all the parts of the system need to be in place. So while the flight aspects of the system were in place, the aerodynamics aspects, the engine aspects needed to catch up here. Now, if we go to some different flight vehicles such as helicopters, which are actually also now widely popular in the systems known as drones, because many of the drones are using rotors to generate lift. So these required so much power that they had to wait for the gas turbines. And these gas turbine engines came up in the 1940s. And only when the gas turbine engines came up could the helicopters be powered. And of course, nowadays, the engines which you see in the typical large aircraft which we take when we travel between cities and between countries, they are all being powered by the gas turbine. So essentially, the gas turbine engines revolutionized the entire field of aerospace engineering and today most of the flight is taking place because of the presence of these gas turbines. Now let us take a look at the airplane and the current configuration is actually pretty standardized except for some people who want to depart from it every now and then. So you have the cockpit, you have the fuselage, the fuselage is the place where the passengers sit or in case it is cargo, this is where you put the cargo, you have the two wings here and then you have the engines and these hang from certain things known as nacelles. So I haven't put that there, but that is the nacelle. Now you have the vertical tail here and you have the horizontal tail. And like I mentioned, these are being put here for stability. Now let's look at the different control surfaces. So essentially you have the ailerons, which are used for certain control we are going to discuss later in this class. Also, we have some devices known as the flaps and these flaps and ailerons, what they do is they increase or decrease the lift which is acting on a particular wing. So what happens is that we can control the amount of lift generated by a particular wing, the right wing or the left wing. And so through that, we can either control the differential lift which is acting here or we can just send the lift up or low. Depending on that, the aircraft will go up or go down. Now, if we look at the horizontal tail, there is a control surface known as the elevator. And this also will essentially change the lift which acts on this control surface. And so with, by increasing or decreasing the lift, you are going to get some motion of the aircraft here and be able to control the aircraft in that direction. Now, finally, there is the rudder which is put on the vertical tail. And again, by moving the rudder on either side, you are able to generate a force which acts on the vertical tail. And so this is again going to help you to control the aircraft. So essentially, the pilot controls the aircraft by using the control surfaces mentioned here. So these are the aileron, the elevator, the rudder, and also the flaps. And in case you have a fly-by-wire control system, which is all driven by electronics, or you have a completely computerized or autonomous flight system, then all these are being moved by some computer system. So essentially that is also possible. You have certain things which are moving these. So again, there are actuators. They may be based on hydraulic systems and so on. So again, the aircraft is actually a very complex system, but if we look at it from an external system perspective, it's actually quite simple. It's got these basic things such as the wing, the horizontal tail, the vertical tail, and the body. And this concept essentially comes out of 
Cayley's postulation of the aircraft. And you can clearly see here that the lift function, which is coming from the wing, is separated from the propulsion function, which is coming from the engine. And again, the stability functions are coming from the tail. So some of it is actually coming from how fish navigate themselves in water. So it's a pretty complex system here, but I would say this is a creation of human beings and it doesn't really have any analogy in the bio world. So when we look at an aircraft, one of the key things which is going to be involved in its design is the estimation of the forces and moments which act on this flight vehicle. And these forces and moments are produced by the air which flows on top of the body. Now there is this entire science of air flow on the body and this is known as the science of aerodynamics. And again, this is, as you can imagine, a part of fluid mechanics or fluid dynamics, which most people study in their physics classes in high school and later. The only difference being that now the fluid being considered is only air and air has certain specific properties. So if we look at it now, aerodynamics is a subset of fluid dynamics and it's not only important for aerospace application but also in automotive, marine and many other fields. So if you ever visit a wind tunnel, you will see that many a time cars are being tested there, ships are being tested there and so on because what is being done is that a flow is being sent on top of these vehicles and people are trying to measure the different forces which are acting on these vehicles. So wherever air is involved, you are going to look at the aerodynamics. So even if you are riding a bike or a motorcycle, the forces which are going to act on the bike and you are all because of the aerodynamics force. Now, if we look at the entire field of aerospace, essentially there are four parts of it and these parts are aerodynamics, structures and materials, propulsion and control and guidance. And in this course, we are going to touch at all these disciplines slightly, but you are going to find that aerodynamics is the discipline we are going to look at a lot, but we are also going to look at all these other disciplines to some extent because these are also important for this particular system. Now, the key thing involved in the study in this course are concepts and equations. So the concepts are essentially concepts coming from physics or engineering. And then what we do is we try to write these things out as equations because the equations help us develop models and models help us develop some idea about the system. And it also helps us to understand the system and design the system down the road. So these are going to be the key in this course. Now, essentially, we can divide these flight vehicles into two parts, the aircrafts and spacecraft. So people typically talk of aircraft. They mean things like airplanes, helicopters, drones, air taxis, balloons, even blimps or airships. So these are all vehicles which fly through the air. But there are also spacecraft which may never go through air. For example, you have satellites which are circling around the world. So if you look at systems such as the GPS system that is based on satellites, if you look at many communication systems and even how satellite internet is done, that's all done through the satellite. You have deep sea probes which are sent to different planets, deep space probes. These are sent to Mars. These are sent to Jupiter and so on. And also you have things such as the space station which are essentially bodies out there in space, not very far from Earth, and people are staying there and they are doing some scientific activities and so on. So these are typical spacecraft. Now, of course, if you think about it, the space vehicles are also going to encounter the Earth's atmosphere in some cases. So sometimes the satellites, which are pretty low, they may encounter some of the atmosphere. Also, sometimes if a satellite crashes, to the ground. It can happen every now and then. They are going to encounter the Earth's atmosphere. And also, if you are sending any planetary probes, they are going to encounter the atmospheres on any of the planets, for example, Moon, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, 
the moons of uh, different planets such as Europa, Titan and so on. And so you need to study the atmosphere of those planets also. Also remember that launch vehicles, rockets, space shuttles, all these have to essentially go through the atmosphere of the Earth. So these are both aircraft and spacecraft at different points of their trajectory. And also we have planetary aircraft nowadays such as the Mars helicopter which has been developed by NASA. And these helicopters essentially are going to fly on a specific planet. So they are designed for the density, gravity and the atmosphere of a specific planet. So these are also you can say spacecraft but again they are aircraft meant for atmosphere of a different planet. So I would say that flight vehicles is a more inclusive term. So nowadays you will see that many a time we don't talk about aircraft structures course. We say it is a flight vehicle structures course and so sometimes this is useful because the things you are designing are not going to be only functioning in the atmosphere of the earth. So to summarize today's lecture, I would say that birds were not a suitable model of flight because of the engineering state of development at the time and even today I would say to some extent. And so gliding was closer to airplane flight and this fact was recognized by Cayley and Lilianthal. And so what happened is that the study of flight in atmosphere and space this became very important and this is essentially the bedrock of aerospace engineering now if you are interested in uh, seeing some pictorials of dragonfly type of flight vehicles you can see the movie dune so i saw this movie on netflix and Essentially here the flight vehicles which they use in the atmosphere of that planet they are all based on some kind of dragonfly design so again that's a simulation but I'm sure it is possible but of course the complexity of moving parts and all is even more complex than a helicopter so that's something to keep in mind. So I'll end this lecture here. This is the first lecture of this course. I think it's going to be a series of lectures and I'm going to try to put each lecture on a specific topic so that it's about 15 to 20 minutes long and so you are able to digest this in one setting. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in a video sometime soon. Make sure you like the video and you subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.